Bob's Slama 2017 deemed successful. Amendment to Medical Act to be discussed soon. Good evening, I'm Carlos and welcome to News on 2. Ops Slama 2017 held during the Hari Raya Bali Kampong period has been deemed a success as a decrease in the number of fatal traffic accidents was recorded compared to previous years. Inspector General of Police Santri Khalid Abu Bakar said fatal accidents dropped by 34 cases or 12% compared to last year's Ops Slama 2016. Kita ada uh, buat sedikit penambahbaikan dari segi mengadakan uh, uh, task force kecil uh, kecil kecilan di merata lokasi dalam kita memastikan penguatkuasaan ini uh, dikuatkuasa dengan dengan sepenuhnya. Jadi saya rasa itu memberi kesan. Uh, di masa-masa biasa kita mungkin tidak mampu mewujudkan task force ini sepanjang masa ya, kerana uh, penugasan-penugasan lain yang perlu kita jalankan. Tetapi untuk tempoh kempen keselamatan Ops Ramad ini, kita mampu mengadakannya. Accidents involving fatalities recorded a decrease with 239 cases compared to 273 during the same period last year, and most of them were due to drivers losing control of their vehicles. Among the fatal cases, 170 of them involved motorcyclists and their pillion riders, although the number decreased by 9% compared to last year. A total of 6,309 operations were conducted with 277,832 summonses issued for various offences, especially for speeding. Well, commenting on the arrest of gang double seven leader under Ops Chantas Khas on Tuesday night in Seremban, Tantri Khalid said it was part of PDRM's all-out war against gang terrorism activities in the country. Now, he said police will not compromise on this and go to the grassroots to take out members of secret societies and gangs, especially their leaders. The Inspector General of Police said the recent arrests was only a start and promised that many more arrests will be made in the future. Tidak menyasarkan uh, kaum-kaum tertentu, tetapi kita mengsasarkan semua kumpulan-kumpulan uh, kongsi gelap yang menjalankan kegiatan yang menyalahi undang-undang. Nanti kita bagilah, nanti kita bagi saya. Saya rasa elok saya tidak sebut sementara ini untuk memastikan kelancaran operasi ini. Speaking after presenting awards to state police contingents and districts in conjunction with the Upslama held during the Hari Raya Adil Fitri period, Tantri Khalid confirmed that the arrested Dato was the leader of Gang Double Seven, which had set up base in the Negeri Sembilan. On the arrest of 10 Malaysians at the Kansai International Airport in Osaka, Japan, for allegedly smuggling 100 kilograms of gold bars, Tantri Khaled wants the foreign ministry to pressure the Japanese authorities to provide the details to PDRM so that they can also begin their own investigation. Jepun belum lagi memalumkan kita memberi laporan kepada kita, walaupun saya telah memohon melalui Interpol dan sebagainya. Pihak Jepun masih lagi tidak memberi laporan kepada kita. So kita masih menunggu lagi. So saya harap uh, apa nama uh, pihak berkuasa Jepun uh, segeralah bagi kita laporan ini. Ya? Dan saya juga berharap kementerian luar mendesak Jepun supaya memberi kita malum, malum balas. Lah, ya? uh, kalau tidak jangan cekok, jangan cakap. Dan ini dia ada buat hebahan bahawa rakyat Malaysia terlibat apabila kita minta laporan dia tak bagi pula. Lambat pula nak bagi kita Kerana kita kalau betul Kita nak Nak menjalankan sesatan kita di sebelah sini According to Tantri Khalid PDRM had requested their Japanese counterparts To provide the necessary information On the arrests but have yet to receive any in the incident at Japanese news portal, Japan Today reported the arrests of 10 Malaysians while attempting to smuggle 100 kilograms of gold bars estimated to be worth more than 19 million ringgit in April this year. The Health Ministry will sit down with the Attorney General Chambers soon to discuss the proposed amendment to the Medical Act 1971. And Minister Dato Sri Dr. S. Subramaniam said this follows the Cabinet's announcement yesterday that medical officers newly hired on contract basis on grade UD41 
must pass the Bahasa Melayu BM subject at the Sijil Plaza in Malaysia or SPM level. Dr. Sri Dr. Subramaniam said the matter will be discussed at ministerial level before it is forwarded to the Attorney General. Out of the thousands, I think affected people very few. And now when the message goes, I'm sure those guys were coming, they will prepare themselves. So I don't think this is going to be an issue. Within one year, I think it will settle because people will make sure that they are ready when they come. He said this after opening the newly built obstetric and neonatology block of the Putrajaya Hospital. Well, foreign workers who failed to apply for the e-card are urged to surrender to escape from being fined and jailed. Immigration Director General Dato Sri Mustafa Ali said those who surrendered would only be charged a penalty of 400 ringgit instead of paying up to 5,000 ringgit if they were caught under the enforcement action. While Dato Sri Mustafa said should the case be brought to court, the minimum fine of 10,000 ringgit would be imposed. He added that the illegal foreign workers who surrendered themselves will be deported immediately, but before that, they will be investigated. Dr. Sri Musafar also said there was no possibility of extension for the e-card registration. He said that the detention depots were expected to be packed with arrested illegals following the e-card special operations being conducted almost every day. However, he added the clearing process was being done by speeding up the investigation and prosecution process while deportation could also be solved, the problem of illegals. Dr. Sri Musafa noted that to date immigration had arrested over 2,000 foreign workers and 44 employers nationwide since the e-card deadline. Well, nine Chinese nationals on board the Xinjiang One vessel were detained on suspicion of illegal sand mining off the waters of Klang Slango yesterday. The Malaysian Maritime Enforcement Agency, MMEA of Maritime District 4, informed that the vessel was apprehended when it was departing after extracting sand illegally. And Maritime Captain Abu Zaki Mama disclosed that the seizure took place when an MMEA vessel was patrolling the area, stumbled on the said vessel when it was on its way out after conducting the illegal activities. And further investigations found that the nine Chinese crew members aged between 41 and 60 years did not possess valid identification papers. The case is being investigated under the Merchant Shipping Ordinance 1952 and the Immigration Act 1959-63 for failing to produce any valid seabed mining documents and personal identification papers. The Syrian Magistrates Court has set August 24th for the remention of a police officer charged with killing his wife last May. Magistrate Marutin Pagan made the decision after finding insufficient evidence. In the second remention of the case this morning, Magistrate Marutin ordered for the prosecution to submit evidence that is credible and complete. The accused was the only suspect, a first-time murder case involving a police officer in Sarawak this year. On May 20th, he was accused of shooting the late Christie, otherwise known by her Muslim name, Siti Nadira Abdullah, aged 33, with a pistol. He was being investigated under Section 302 of and for murder and has served as a police inspector in a police station in the rurals of Sarawak. Well, coming up next, Sinai Airport to segregate international and domestic passengers. Stay with us. Hello again. Now with more flights coming to Johor, Sinai International Airport is looking into segregating passengers according to international and domestic flights beginning next month. And the move was part of an international guideline, but the need to implement it only arose now due to the rise in arrival of passengers this year. Johor Tourism Domestic Trade and Consumerism Executive Committee Chairman Dato T. Siu Kiong said the airport has received 1.54 million passengers in the first quarter of this year compared to 1.36 million passengers in the corresponding period last year. Peringatan pengguna 
Lapangan terbang antarabangsa Senai beberapa tahun ini menunjukkan perkembangan sektor perancongan dan perdagangan negeri Johor di mana terdapat keperluan untuk menaik taraf lapangan terbang ini untuk meningkat keseresaan dan keselamatan penumpang. Di samping itu, kerja naik taraf ini juga akan menambah jurnal kedai jualan dan FMB. Datuk Tee said this after conducting a walkabout around the airport. He said the upgrading of the airport, which is currently 80% completed, is expected to be ready in August, adding that the cost of the upgrade was about 7 million ringgit. 610 flights out of 16 domestic and international destinations fly in and out of the Sinai International Airport. Well, members of the Malaysian Inbound Tourism Association, MITA, and its affiliates will get incentives and special considerations as a form of relief when the tourism tax is implemented on August 1st. MITA President Uzaidi Udani said this has been promised by Tourism and Culture Minister Dr. Sri Muhammad Nazri Abdulaziz following a meeting between them. The Malaysian Tourism Council, or MTC, Malaysian Chinese Tourism Association, MCTA, Malaysian Indian Tours and Travels Association, MITTA, and other local tourist associations on Tuesday. Now, the meeting, he said, was conducted to address concerns of possible cancellations of contracted groups and these tours from overseas due to upcoming tourism tax. Extra incentives and a special consideration were promised to a group of tourism associations to cushion the effects of the tourism tax. The dissemination of false news, even if it is just one piece of news, has to be stopped immediately. Communications and Multimedia Ministry Secretary General Dato Sri Dr. Sharif Azara Said Mohammed said, if not addressed immediately, the news will not only harm individuals, but also have an effect on a nation. She said the Malaysian government had launched a sabanarnia.my portal that informed about the truthfulness of news that went viral on social media. Di Malaysia dengan ada my sebenarnya or sebenarnya.my macam tu, itu akan merupakan satu langkah untuk kita membanteras berita-berita palsu seperti ini. Di uh, Singapura juga mereka ada sama dengan kita juga yang mana mereka juga sedang mengambil langkah. Sekerana berita palsu ini bukan saja memudaratkan individu tetapi dia memudaratkan kerajaan dan seluruh negara. She said this after the inaugural meeting of the Malaysia-Singapore Joint Committee on Information and Communications Corporation in Singapore. Dr. Sri Dr. Sharif Azara co-chaired the meeting with the Permanent Secretary of the Singapore Ministry of Communications and Information, Gabriel Lim. Well, that concludes this evening's News on 2. In our top story, Amendment to Medical Act to be discussed soon. Join us again at 12.30 tomorrow afternoon. I'm Amin Carlos. Thanks for watching. Good evening.